Indian restaurants and Telugu's are literally ruling the roost, and we are doing real estate all over Texas as well. Water is the elixir of life. It really is what survives humanity. It really is what helps, uh, you know, a city grow, a state grow, and a, a nation grow. So we have taken it very seriously to ensure that every trickle, every drop of water that is rightfully allocated to Telangana gets utilized properly and judiciously. So we have not only ensured that the 46,000 lakes and tanks in Telangana are given the much-needed fillip through Mission Kakatiya. We have strengthened these lakes, tanks. We have done it in a mission mode and ensured that every drop of water that trickles in benefits not only that village, but the entire groundwater table around in the surrounding habitations as well. We also have ensured that not just these small resources, but also the large resources that we need, because River Godavari and Krishna run at a much lower uh, you know, a, a contour compared to the entire state of Telangana. Hyderabad as a city is at 535 meters above sea level. The highest mount in Telangana is at 650 meters, whereas Godavari runs at about 80, 90 meters above sea level. So the only way we can actually you know, use this water and bring this water to our barren fields is by way of lifting them through a multiple stages. That's exactly what we have done. You know, people talk about China. People talk about Three Gorges and how well the Chinese work, how quickly they move, how quickly they get things done, etc., etc. But it's unfortunate that not many of us know. And I would appreciate it if you actually Google after you go home or even now if you want. You can Google and you can just type in the world's largest lift irrigation project. It is in Telangana. The project is called Kaleshwaram, where we lift water from 80 meters above sea level all the way up to 618 meters. Now, this project alone provides water for irrigation, water for farmers to about 45 lakh acres. It provides for drinking water needs of Hyderabad. It also has 15% earmarked for industrial consumption. And this is literally a lifeline for the entire northern part of Telangana. Likewise, we have another project ongoing called as Palamuru Rangareddy Lift Irrigation. Now, this is another lifeline for the entire south of Telangana, southern Telangana, which reeled under tremendous drought which reeled under tremendous distress and which was actually a, a sort of a synonym for migration of workers, Palamuru especially, Mahabubnagar especially. But today with Palamuru Rangare Lift Irrigation, which almost has reached now the final lap, and we are looking to ensure that this project gets completed in the next few months, probably by October. Once that is done, you would see water flowing to about 12 and a half lakh acres of land for one crop cycle if you take it, and if you take two crop cycles, it would be 25 lakh acres. Just to give you numbers again, since this is economics, back in 2014, our total agriculture producer, we have our agriculture secretary also sitting here, Mr. Raghunandan Rao, our total agriculture produce, and especially on paddy, we used to procure about 68 lakh metric tons of paddy in 2014. But as of this year, the procurement rose to three and a half crore metric tons. Telangana was ranked number 24 among Indian states in paddy production. This year, we are ranked number two, second only to Punjab, number one. I'm, I'm sorry, we are ranked number one, surpassing Punjab. So we have literally become the rice bowl of India. So that is the transformation that this focus on water has helped. Not only have we become the first state in India to give a portable drinking water connection to each and every home, we have secured the water needs of Hyderabad city as well. Hyderabad drinking water needs have been taken care of till the year 2052 by way of bringing water from Krishna and Godavari. Of course, the dream is to improve. The dream is to come from alternate day supply to every day and ensure that eventually we get to a stage, you know, where the first, like the first world where you get 24 by 7 water as well. That's the dream. So water has been a very, very important subject and we've done some amazing things and we've inspired the nation. Today, after Telangana has completed Mission Bhagirath, Government of India has woken up after several years and has started a new project called as Har Gar Jal, Jal Jeevan Mission, which is good because, you know, we need to learn from each other. And now they, are, they have also embarked on this mission. Gujarat, I'm told, is also there. Goa, I'm, I'm told, also has completed 100%. Very proud. As an Indian, as a fellow Indian, as a citizen, I think nothing makes me more proud because I remember there was a time when I was a student, there was a saying. People used to say, what Bengal does today, India does tomorrow. Today I can stand here proudly and say what Telangana does today, 
India does tomorrow. And that is what has been the hallmark of this government. Not only in water. We have done exceptionally well in making sure that even fiscal prudence has been taken into account. A lot of people accuse us of a lot of things. But I can tell you with a lot of confidence, the way we have leveraged the economy, the way the GSDP kept growing, the way the per capita kept growing, has given us scope to raise debt. The, has given us scope to raise debt and invest in infrastructure. A lot of people you know, make a hue and cry, especially the opposition in my state. Every day they keep making a point, or trying to keep making a point, that you've made the state a debt-ridden state. Let me tell you a quick example. You know, there was a time, I am 47, which I called me young, but I'm not young at all. In fact, I'm going through a midlife crisis as we speak. Um, you know, there was a time in my prior generation, or in my father's generation, so if I have to put it more succinctly, where the thinking used to be, even if, even if you are a bureaucrat, the thinking used to be, by the time I retire from my service, I should be able to have a house in Prashasana Nagar or wherever you can afford, and maybe build a house. And by the time I retire, I move from a government bungalow, government quarter, I go to, uh, you know, uh, go and retire into a house of my own. That was the thinking. But take a step back and think for a minute. That was the thinking of the prior generation, where people used to be hesitant even to raise a debt. But today, a young guy or a young girl gets a new job in uh, the IT sector here in Hyderabad or Bangalore, what is the first thing they do? They actually pay a, a fat check, they take a fat, fat paycheck, go to the bank, raise a loan, buy a home, buy a car, in the very first month or second month. So what changed? What changed is, this thinking of the typical Indian thinking that there was, say, a few decades ago, that we have to save pie by pie, paisa paisa jod ke, ultimately a ghar kharidna hai, Telugu mein ek kahawat hai, kyunki zyada tar log yaan Telugu samajhte hai, isi lehe bol roho. Illu katti chudu, pelli chesi chudu. Matlab ye hua ki ghar bhana ke dekho, shadi kar ke dekho. Dono bhi bohat, zindagi mein bohat, bohat matlab, you know, tough challenges hai, ye kahawat thi. Isi lehe kahawat wahan se hai. Sawaal ye tha, ki kisi aadmi ko agar apna makan banana tha, ye ghar banana tha, kyun usko matlab, pachas saal paisa ek ek paisa jod ke banana hota tha. Kyunki hamari mindset, hamari culture aisi thi, conditioning aisi thi ki, भाई कुछ भी करो बट कर्ज मत उठाओ कुछ भी करो जिंदगी में किसी के आभारी नहीं रहना है कुछ भी करो बचपन से सिखाया जाता है बट द फैक्ट इज इफ यू लुक एट मोस्ट डेवलप्ड कंट्रीज इन द वर्ल्ड हु डू वी थिंक आर द मोस्ट डेवलप्ड कंट्रीज इन द वर्ल्ड द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स जर्मनी जापान द टॉप थ्री इकोनॉमीज आर यूएस चाइना एंड जापान यू एस लुक एट यूएस देर डेट जी डी पी रेशियो इज हंड्रेड the debt gdp ratio of japan is more than 200% the debt gdp ratio of india as a country is 59% the debt gdp ratio of telangana is 25% my point is if you look at 28 states in india and rank them on a debt gsdp ranking we are ranked in the top you know you know bottom 5 ranked in the bottom 5 if you ask me we haven't leveraged our economy enough. What matters is you raise a debt, but where do you invest it? If you raise a debt and invest into ramping up your power infrastructure, moving from a power deficit state to a power sufficient or power surplus state, would that be a wrong investment? Would that not attract more industry? Would that not attract more and more investment? Would that not create more wealth? If you actually invest, if you raise a debt and invest in drinking water needs of the state, are you not cutting down on the out-of-pocket expenditure for health? Are you not cutting down on all the typical, you know, news that you would, you know, see in a, a winter season or a rainy season, you know, at the onset of a monsoon? In Telugu, every newspaper used to write, I remember, as a kid, Mansam Patina Manyam, Agency Lo Anturogalu, Matlab infectious diseases, waterborne diseases, which were rampant in the agency areas and tribes and even the habitations, in rural habitations, just with one project called Mission Bhagirath, where we invested 40,000 plus crores, today we've been able to take care of all of that healthcare concerns, we've been able to cut down out-of-pocket expenditure for our people, and we've done a magnificent job of becoming truly an aspirational state for the rest of India. Likewise, when we took a project loan, and have committed and invested in a project like Kaleshwaram, which, as Richard said, has created wealth outside of Hyderabad, because she was pointing out 
is lopsided development or lopsided focus on Hyderabad, does it help in the long run? No, it doesn't. Of course, you have to decentralize. Of course, you have to industrialize in other pockets. Of course, you have to focus on rural livelihoods. Of course, you have to create avenues to create wealth outside of Hyderabad. Unless you do that, people are going to migrate, people are going to urbanize, people are going to suburbanize. That is a fact. So what have we done with that money that we have raised as a debt? Where did we invest? We have invested in power, infrastructure, not power for us, but power infrastructure. We have invested in drinking water infrastructure. We have invested in infrastructure for irrigation. We have invested in industrial infrastructure. After having invested in these rural areas, let me give you an example of what we've accomplished. If somebody was to ask me today, what is the Telangana model? If you have to define in one sentence, I will tell you. Telangana model is unique, it's holistic, it's integrated, it's inclusive, it's balanced. In Telugu, if I have to put it, Samagra, Samikrita, Sammilita, Samatulya, Abhiruddhi, Telangana Sadhin Chindi. Yatla Antara, if you ask me, what do you mean, you know, are these all fancy fluff words, can you back it up? I'll tell you how. I just told you that our agri exports have risen, our agri expansion has happened by more than 119 percent. 68 lakh metric tons to 3.5 crore metric tons of production of paddy and procurement. That has happened on one side in the rural areas. On the other side in Hyderabad, our IT exports were 56,000 crore. And as of this year, it is 2.41 lakh crore. The number of people working in technology in Hyderabad was 323,000, 3 lakh 23,000. As of this year, it's 9 lakh 5,000. We have tripled our, we have quadrupled our IT exports. We have also done exceedingly well on agri-exports and agri-expansion. That's a balanced model. We are less than 3% of India in terms of population. We are only 2.5% of India, in fact, if I have to be precise. But we win 30% of the awards when it comes to national panchayati awards or national municipality awards. Is that not proof, of, proof enough that urban development and rural development are going hand in hand in a very unique way in Telangana? Also, let me add, Industrialization has been rampant, as Richa mentioned. We have ha we've been able to attract marquee investments through TSI pass and a number of things that we do. But not only has industry grown, environment has not suffered. Typically, all around the world, you'd see industry growing and therefore, as a consequence, environment suffering. That has not happened in Telangana. Industry has been growing rapidly, but environmental consciousness of the leader of the state, of our chi chief minister, is laudable because under his leadership, today, we are the state which has grown the maximum in terms of green cover, 7.7%. 5,13,000 acres of new forest has been created in the state of Telangana, unlike any other state in India. So this is, the law, this is the balanced model I'm talking about. And this is the inclusive society. We have not discriminated anybody. It could be a migrant, it could be a, a person from rural background, or an urban background, or no matter where they are from which part of India they are from, which part of the world they are from. They've all been made to welcome. I keep saying this and I can't say it enough. Those of, me, uh, those of you who cover me are probably tired of you know, hearing this, but nevertheless, let me say it. I tell all the investors that I meet that Hyderabad is that melting pot because you mentioned migrants, Richard. Hyderabad is that melting pot. And Hyderabad is that point of confluence where the north of India meets the south of India. When someone comes Hyderabad, एक बिहार से या उत्तर प्रदेश से कोई आदमी आता है उसको ऐसा नहीं लगता है कोई और किसी और के घर आए 